The flood levels from the destruction of the Novokohovka Dam in Ukraine are expected to reach their peak Wednesday, but the scale of the devastation across large parts of the region has brought fresh heartbreak in what is still an active war zone. It's now threatening a new wave of homelessness, disease, toxic chemical contamination, and even warnings of floating landmines in this ecological disaster. This is the city of Kherson, which was once occupied by Russian forces before Ukraine's military retook it. It's where Reuters camera crew found this resident, who's saying her grandmother is trapped on the first floor of a building with her cats and dogs. <laughs> She was brought there yesterday, thinking it would be safer for her. Alas, it was not. Elsewhere in the city is Irina, an animal rescue volunteer. She says her group has already recovered up to 30 dogs. And they're trying to save whatever animals they can. But first, they need to wait for a boat so they can go out and save more. Russian state media are reporting that although the water levels may have peaked, the floods are expected to remain for up to 10 days. The long-term damage is another matter. Ukraine's government says the destruction of the dam, which it blames on Russia, is threatening to leave hundreds of thousands of residents without access to drinking water. It also says it will turn what was once farmland into swamps and turn other areas into desert. Russia blames Ukraine for the disaster and has imposed a state of emergency in the areas that it controls, such as this town, Novokohovka, where the destroyed dam is. <laughs> Resident Valery Melnik's home is flooded, but he says he won't leave. <laughs> he wants to stay, he says, because the war <laughs> can't go on forever. Email exchanges from inside the BBC, they talk about the risk of violating Indian laws. It's easier to rake up the freedom of speech debate, but does it give anyone a free pass to knowingly violate the law? America supports India because it needs India's support in return. And India is working with the US because it suits India's interests. This is how geopolitics works. Last night, he diffused a crisis with his defense minister. But today, Netanyahu was confronted with a new problem. His cabinet seems to have rebelled against him. The UK is looking at the Indian subcontinent to fill its coffers. That India seems to be negotiating from a position of power, like a partner and not a former colony. and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the colonial loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting.